Hey, hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of the Smart Flip, the Phone Flippers podcast. Guys, today we have on with me Samuel. Samuel uh, has we've been talking back and forth for a couple of months, and uh, he's done some some big stuff in the past couple of months, and and really taken this business seriously. And I wanted to bring him on uh, because I think he has some knowledge, and he's really young as well, which we love interviewing young people in this business because it shows what can be done uh, when enough effort is put in. So with that being said, by the way, if you want to be on this podcast, feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, we can promote your business as long as you're not a scammer or something like that. And uh, yeah, so let's, let's kick this thing off. Um, so Sam, dude, how'd you get into phone flipping? Yeah, it's kind of a, it's kind of a complicated story. So basically when I was 19, I got into the life insurance industry. So I was selling like final expense life insurance. Like it's kind of like a burial type of life insurance. And then I kind of moved from final expense to cash value life insurance policies. So basically, I don't know if you heard about like infinite banking or becoming your own bank, the strategies. Yeah. My target market at the time was like business owners. I, I was wanting to help business owners implement the infinite banking strategy. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Have you ever heard of oh, it? I know. Yeah. I see it everywhere. So basically, but it was very difficult for me to convince people to put tens of thousands of dollars into into a cash value life insurance policy. And I was just like, if if I'm trying to target um business owners, I should probably become a business owner myself and try to implement the strategies myself, right? Like I need to put my money in these policies before trying to convince convince somebody else to do the same. And I was like, what's the best type of business for me to to do? Um and I was just like the best type of business for at that time, I thought it'd be a business where I could easily flip my money. So let's say I put a thousand dollars into something, let's say I make two hundred dollars. So that that's a twenty percent return on investment, right? So just thinking about like, okay, I've got money in this life insurance policy. I I, I borrow against my money at a five percent interest rate, and let's just say I'm able to make twenty five percent of my money. So there's like a spread. So I felt like it was very it would be easier for me to better understand the infinite banking strategy if I could get into a business where I could, I could easily calculate my ROI. So that's basically, I, I know it's such a, it's weird, but that's the way to get into the industry. <laughs> yeah, I considered real estate. I, I also considered um, flipping couches. I don't know if you've heard of Ryan Pineda. Yeah. He's like, like a real estate investor. And I read his, his um, there's this book, it's called the wealthy way. I think that's uh, his late. Cause I read a lot. That's his latest book. And he talked about how he started off flipping couches before he uh, transitioned into real estate, but I didn't want to flip couches because they're really big. So I was like, what, what else can you flip? And I thought, you know, phones. So I actually just started about last, last year, September. So it's been about a year. So what are you doing uh, in terms of sales and profit on average per month right now? Uh, so revenue probably like close to 70 K maybe 65, 70. And then profit usually like 15 to 17,000 a month. Dude, especially for somebody 22 years old. 21, I'll be 22 tomorrow. 20, yeah. Nice, dude. That's awesome. So that's a very interesting way to get into it. And I also love the fact that you were, you recognized very quickly. You're like, I'm trying to sell this thing to business owners, but I don't even know a business owner's problems. Mm. Right? That's basically what happened. And you were like, how can I, I should probably become a business owner so that I can actually talk to them, you know, because that's probably what was happening. It was probably just a disconnect right between what they knew and what you what you didn't know and uh you couldn't sell them because of that right you know i know we both listen to harmozy and you know because yeah. i love literally on my way to work today i was to the office i was thinking i was listening to harmozy and um you know when you look at the value uh, value equation he talks about the perceived likelihood of achievement and being in the life insurance industry i felt like the perceived the perceived likelihood of achievement for me it was really really low because I was just a, I was a young nineteen year old trying to convince you to put twenty thousand dollars into a life insurance policy. I've never implemented the strategy myself, but even if I was freaking eighteen or nineteen and I've actually implemented the strategy and I've actually gotten good results from implementing the strategy, the perceived likelihood of achievements it's, it's you know it's a bit higher because you've actually done it. You know you've you've done what you're talking about, but when you've never done what you're talking about, it's just when you talk, when we think about the value you're trying to offer to the customer, it's just, it's just lower, you know? So, um, but yeah, man, now I'm, I'm flipping phones and I, I'm not really in the life insurance industry anymore. I actually, my license actually expired. So. <laughs> well, well, dude, like, um, 
So you're doing a really good amount of sales and profit per month now. Um, what does your current process look like? What is your What does your day to day look like now? Um, day to day. So at first, I was actually I was I had to um respond to my messages. My obviously I run the ads, respond to the messages myself. But eventually, I got I got to a point in the business where I was able to. I've got two VAs because I'm originally from Africa, Nigeria. So I'm Nigerian. I've got two VAs, and and I know that this is not a question you asked me, but I like to touch on the fact that like one of my main drivers. Obviously, I feel like sometimes we have like we have certain goals that are obviously self centered. You know, it's about me and my family, and I want to have this much money. But there are also certain goals that are kind of selfless in a way, and. For me, one of the reasons why I wanted to get into business was because I wanted to be able to create job opportunities for people back home in, in Nigeria because there's a lot of poverty down there. And you could have freaking a master's degree and have no job, no job, you know. So, but if you're in America, especially having a business where I could create job opportunities for people back back in Nigeria, like that's always been like a like a I call it like a purpose, like my purpose. So yeah. um, so I've got two VAs and they I train them, I've got like scripts and everything, and they handle my messages and uh, obviously we both know about like high level, like the software, yeah, yeah. but, um, basically I run the ads, they handle the messages. I've got like, a, at first I used to meet people at Starbucks and, uh, it was just really annoying how like they'll change their, their, their hours. And I'll have to be like, yo, like, can we like meet at a different, I just hated it. Cause being an entrepreneur, we love autonomy. We want to be in control. And the fact that I had to rely on another business, uh, business, um, hours, like at first they're like, oh yeah, we're open from. 10 to 8 p.m. and then I show up they're like oh we're closed I'm like ah oh, come on I have I have experienced that myself when they're closed so, 4 p.m. due to low staff or something like that and I was like ah uh, all right I'll just go to McDonald's across the street yeah. <laughs> but like you know in the beginning that's uh you know it sounds like you have a store now or or an office anyway I wouldn't call it a store it's more like an office slash forward slash store but it's not like a storefront it's kind of like an office space but that also kind of looks like a store yeah but uh yeah, it's kind of like a store slash office space. But yeah, man, they handle the messages. They book the appointments. They put it on my calendar. And I meet all of my customers here in my office or in my store, whatever you want to call it. And um, also, whenever I've got nobody coming in, obviously, I'm on Marketplace sending messages. Um, also, just trying to – I'm very – I feel like one of the things that's really helped me, especially being in business, is just I'm very, like – I'm I'm very curious. I'm always wanting more information. I'm reaching out to you, like I'm reaching out to a bunch yeah. of people. If there's one thing that just that I feel like has, has really helped me so far is just the fact that I'm always wanting to learn. I'm constantly reading books. I'm constantly like I'm obsessed with information because I truly believe like that's what separates people. It's not you can it's not just the work at the hormones always talks about like it's not just about um how hard you row. Sometimes it's the boat that you're what you're the the vehicle of the boat that you're in, you know. So yeah. Um, it's all about that information. So constantly, constantly trying to get that information and Love implement. That. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know if we've talked about this, but w did you roll across my YouTube channel, or like, how did you learn about me? Like, mm -hmm. so how did I learn about you, man? That's such a good question because there's. <laughs> we've been talking for a while, and it's been months. the The way I learned about you, I'm pretty sure. I know you. You know Christian. Cumbridge, right? The dude from yeah, Canada. yeah, we're really good friends. Yeah, yeah. So I actually, the way I actually found out about phone flipping was through him. You know, whenever I started researching what I could flip, I, I came across uh, his video on YouTube, and that's kind of how I got into it. But how did I come across you? I'm pretty sure, um, because I'm always on Facebook, just like looking, and I think I th obviously I know you have a phone flipping group, um, on Facebook, but I think the way I came across you, honestly, it's very hard for me to pin on exactly how, but I know, like, it started off with, like, I think I saw, I'm pretty sure, I, I think I came across, like, your Facebook group or something, yeah. and I joined, it, I joined the Facebook group, and then I started watching your content on, on first of all, on Facebook, because you actually have some videos on Facebook, so I started watching it. a lot on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, whoa, like, I was actually learning from, I was like, wow, he's got some really good information. Then I reached out to you, like, yo, like, um, I think I was asking about like your pro because I know you have like a recelerator program and you've got like different programs. So I reached out to yeah. you just to like, I don't know, hear like the package and stuff. But then from Facebook, I started watching like your YouTube content, too. So it just honestly started from joining your group and then reaching out to you like I always do. I'm always reaching out to people. Just Love network. That. That's yeah. awesome. Dude. 
That's awesome. That's good for, for people to hear because a lot of people are kind of in that, uh, that area, I guess. Um, and like, I remember when we, whenever we first started, you were, you were in the very beginning stages of your business. Oh yeah. Um, it, it, it shows that you just absorb information. Like, cause I, we, you know, we, we talk intermittently probably, probably once a month consistently. Yeah. Um, and like, I've just seen a steady growth. Like, so you're, you're obviously absorbing information either from a YouTube channel or wherever, like you, if it's mine or if it's Christians, like me and Christian talk, well, he's more reach outs than anything else, but, um, I mean, he's got great stuff too. Like we, me and him are constantly in contact. <laughs> um, so we're, we're really good friends at this point. Um, and by the way, that just goes to show you guys, there's not really competition either. Like the competition, it needs to be collaboration, right? Even like, you know, we offer a course, Christian offers a course, me and him talk all the time. Like there's so many customers out there. Like yeah. even at the down at the reselling level, like you don't have competition. There's always going to be more phones than people. Right. Like, yeah. so I love that, man. Love that. So um, I want to, I want to talk about something real quick. You um, started off in this business after you left life insurance. So what was the biggest challenge you had early on? In this business? Yeah, in this business. Um, the, the biggest hardest thing to learn or the biggest thing? The biggest, I, early on was just, I was in college at the time because I just graduated from U of a, from, I don't want to say my university, but I just graduated. But at the time when I started this business, I was in my final year. I was a senior in college. So I was in my, I think, first semester of my final year. And I was just, because I don't know if I, I don't know if I said this, but be Nigerian, you're expected to be a doctor, a lawyer, engineer. Yeah. I did I actually did pretty good in college and the plan was for me to go to medical school. And uh, I kind of told my parents, I'm sorry, I don't want to do it no more. And it was, it was <laughs> ah, yeah, I, they couldn't take it. It was like, are you kidding me? Like my mom couldn't sleep for like two days. It was bad. Like, cause yeah. Cause my, I actually studied neuroscience in college. That was my degree. It was, wow. I studied neuroscience and the plan was to, because it's when you study like a pre-medical type of, when you have a degree that's very science focused, it's easier to, kind of you know prepare for the MCAT and get into medical school but anyway I told them you know what I want to do business because I don't know I just feel like I could make a bigger impact with business create a lot more job opportunities um and I just felt like I could build wealth being, being in business so but anyway for me being in college and having to balance trying to keep a certain GPA and on top of that school I mean other like extracurricular activities and on top of that business I feel like it was just like doing it part-time I feel like of course I ha I definitely had to find the time but I feel like the biggest challenge at the time was just I wasn't able to create enough time to just keep hustling in the business. And it's crazy because literally like I was doing like I think I was doing like three thousand of like four thousand a month part time yeah. in college. And literally like once I was done with school, it just went from four gates to like twelve thousand. <laughs> it's amazing it what from, extra time will do. huh? So going full time was just like I feel like going full time and just saying, you know what, like. This is all. This is all I'm thinking about. This is all I'm gonna do. It's just this. Nothing else. I'm not. I don't got no job. I, it's all I'm doing. And I felt like I had to bet on myself, saying, you know, I'm not. And if you're betting on yourself, especially being Nigerian and having everybody tell you like you're throwing away an opportunity to go to medical school, you've done research, you have a good GPA, like you should go to med. It's the safer path. And literally saying, I'm gonna bet on myself to not go down to to not go to not follow the safer path and to take a risk, like. When you're betting on yourself and you know, like, you don't want to fail and, you, you, and there's people looking up to you, there's just that more pressure, at least for me. So I think of having your back against the wall and just going full time, it's a risk, but it, it's it's definitely going to change your mindset and do something. It's going to do something. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I remember yeah. whenever I, uh, so I graduated with a degree in occupational health and safety. And uh, uh, I told my parents, I was like, I'm actually doing quite well at this, like, phone flipping thing. I think I'm going to go full time in that instead. And they were like, are you sure? You know, like, <laughs> it sounds so dumb, right? Like I'm going to go flip electronics full time. Like it sounds dumb, but, at, but it freaking works. Like um, it, it, I was, I was making, you know, four to five grand a month in profit outside of my serving job, you know? And it was just mm -hmm. like, and I was in college at the same time. So I was like, ah, this thing is working, you know, and um, I love that. So um, let me go, let me go here as well. So like, 
was there like a specific moment or deal that you had a, with a customer that made you realize that this thing is scalable? Like what, what was that aha moment? That made me realize it's scalable. I've always, I've always felt like it was scalable because I, I always go back to Hormozzi because Hormozzi always said, and I'm always going to keep referring yeah. to him, but it is because I, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally get it. <laughs> but basically he always talked about how, like when you get in an industry, Look at the people who are playing at the biggest level. Like, if there's somebody in your industry who's doing freaking fifty million dollars a year, a hundred million dollars, you know, it's probably scalable. So, scalability wasn't really a question for me because if I look at freaking Gazelle or like Eco ATM, if they're doing those numbers, they're doing that thing. Scalability wasn't, but it, uh, but a moment where I'm like, damn, we can make some good money. It was like I think it was just I met one person and he had a bunch of phones. And I probably made like I think that was like my second month in the business and that day and just. Damn, and I think it was in two hours. I think my profit was like twenty five hundred, and I was like, "Wow, like, yeah, that's it doesn't happen often." But yeah, like that, that, yeah, he had a bunch of phones at the time, but and I was like, "Damn, wow!" But in terms of scalability, I've always felt like I mean, there's over three hundred million people in America. Yep. I think sixty seventy percent, at least seventy percent, are iPhone users. Like, so there's millions of iPhones out there. Scal like in terms of scalability, it's not it's not a doubt. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Yeah. I mean, so so there was never a doubt in your mind because of, you know, there the sheer numbers is what I'm hearing. Yeah. People yeah. have certain stuff. And, yeah. you know, we talk about that all the time. It's like, there are more phones in America than there are people, right? How could it not be scalable, right? Wow. Um, and I, I love, and, you know, going outside of phones, like you got Samsungs and then, you know, the, the iPads and MacBooks and smartwatches. I'm sure you buy all of those. Um, you know, one of oh, yeah. one of my millionaire mentors, Hayden Howard, you know, he, he the guy who created price sheets, you know, he said oh. one thing, he's like, there should be no limit to what you mm. buy because electronics have inherent value no matter what. And I was just like, that's perfect. Yeah. So um so <clears throat> let's see, what would you say has been the reason for you know you being you know, success was it your marketing, your negotiations, your uh, your hires, or you know what what aspect do you think has been the most successful part? Honestly, I think the the biggest factor behind like I don't want to call it success because I don't feel successful. <laughs> I feel like yeah, you know I'm not being humble, but I feel like there's yeah. just more. Out there. Uh, but my well, it's, it's, it's relative anyway. But um, I think the biggest the biggest factor for me is I think consistency. I think being consistent because I've noticed like some people they start and then they slow down after maybe like they make some money and then they stop for a few months. And I think being consistent and also just being good to people like the the way that I treat my repeat customers, of course, it's, it's a business transaction, but I'm they could tell like we're almost like friends. I, maybe it's because yeah. we're around the same. I don't know. The people who sell to me, they're also kind of young. But we're kind of like friends, like we talk and just laugh. We talk about life and just like joke around. Like, obviously, we try to keep it professional, but you don't want to be too like professional. Like, you also want to be like night, like kind and like jovial. And but I, I think the biggest factor is just being consistent. Like, like, like Hormozzi always says, like, giving up is not an option. Like, yeah. giving up is not an option. Obviously, it's easier said than done when you have like two kids and a wife. And like, obviously, I'm a single man, I don't have any children, but uh. Um, obviously the less responsibility you have, the easier it is, I guess. But when you're out, but I would say if you're young, if you don't have any crazy responsibilities, just obviously I'm not here to give financial advice, but what's working Work. for me is I, I, I gotta, <laughs> <laughs> even though I, I come from a finance background and I've worked in finance and I, I once was in the whole finance world. I think Dave Ramsey always says, man, you know, there's, there's seven baby steps and I'm going to just, it's seven baby steps. I just want to share this because I think I think it's very valuable. You know, save a thousand dollars. That's your emergency fund. You want to save a thousand dollars. You want to pay out. I I got a scholarship to go to college. So I don't have any debt, but you pay a thousand dollars. Pay off your debt. You want to have three to six months of emergency. So I feel like when you're being smart with your money and not blowing it, it makes it easier to stay consistent because you don't have to go back to a job because it's like you have like three six months of savings. To yeah. where it's like, you know, if you don't make money for two months, you're still going to be all right. You, you still be good, you know. So ever since I was in, in freshman in college, it was always about I obviously listening to Dave Ramsey and everything. You know, yeah. I always had have that have that 
have some money to fall back on, I guess. It helps to stay consistent, but consistency is, is key. It's huge. I'm assuming you saw the podcast with Hormozy and Ramsey then. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. That was great. I love that. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we I've, I've been back and forth with Ramsey, and we've, we've come back, um, you know, because you go out in the world and you learn stuff about credit and leveraging and things like that. And uh, one thing I've noticed, especially with flippers, is flippers tend to not be good with credit. Just like, mm. that, that's just what I've seen, you know? So like a lot of people will reach out to me and they'll be like, you know, like, should I, should I take a loan to start this business? And I usually tell them no, like mm. take, you can take a loan for education because the ROI on that is much faster, right? Yeah. Like way faster um, than the actual like inventory part of it. Because if you, if you say you take out a loan to actually buy stuff and you're brand new to the business, you oh. can screw up every deal, right? Oh, if you yeah. don't have the right knowledge, you know? Oh. Yeah, see, you, <laughs> oh, yeah. I think a lot of people hate on Ramsey because the way he says it, it's a slow way, right? But it's a, it's a, you know, business is built brick by brick, right? And every time you do a transaction is an opportunity to learn. Um, and if you go, you know, if you try to, I, you know, if you try to skip steps, I've noticed a lot of people try to skip a lot of steps um, and then they, they blow up their business. A lot of times I've seen so many people go to, you know, 15, 20,000 in profit per month, the fast way, and then just blow up, blow up their business, whether it's through a partnership or whether it's through, you know, whatever. Um, and I, I really like, I like how you're building the business off of Ramsey's principles, because I think that is the best way to do it for a phone flipper, especially if somebody's starting out. I don't know. Just to clarify, I don't, I, I don't know if I would say I'm building it off of his principle in terms of business. It's it's yeah. that I, there's personal finance and there's business. Yeah. I think I follow. I don't I don't agree with everything he says. Like, don't have a credit card. I have a credit card. Yeah. Like, I just pick out certain things from his principles that I really like. So being financially having a budget, I have a budget. Yeah. Like, literally, I have a budget that I follow every month. So and I've been doing that since I was freaking 18. So because I started. That's awesome. I started when I was 18, 17, 18. But when it comes to business, it's like I have like it depends on the topic. There's certain top when it comes to business, I know Hormozy, like that's my guy. When it yep. comes to like personal finance principles, there's certain people in this in a different world or in a different space that I follow. So Dave Ramsey is just one of them and I pick out certain principles. But when it comes to business, I don't have I don't what you said about debt, I think it's also a question of risk. Cause when I first got started in this business, I probably cried like twice. Like I got scammed a few times. Like I'm not gonna sit here. It's, it's not all being all fun and nice. Like I, my first month of business, I probably there. Were, I think when I first started, I probably lost lost like two three thousand dollars. Bought fake phones. Got scammed. My sent out a phone, and then somehow the buyer didn't get it. You know, it, it, business comes with risk, and I think the problem is when when you take out take out debt to start this business. The, it's not because it's a bad idea. The problem is because you don't have the knowledge. So you're t the risk is just the risk. Is, it's not in your favor. But the, the more knowledge you have, I think the less risky it is because uh, the question of risk, I think it's uh, I think it's uh, I think risk is it's inversely proportional to, to your level of skill. Um, that yeah. is so well put. <laughs> well. So well put on that. Like. Because a lot of people, you know, they'll come to me and they'll they'll ask that, should I take out a loan to buy inventory? I'm like, no, you don't have any knowledge. Like, don't do that. Like, it exactly what you talked about will happen. You will buy a fake phone. You will buy the wrong thing for the wrong price. Like, you'll do that, and you you have this this, and then you just create more debt for yourself essentially. Um, and that's just how it works because you're not getting paid back now. <laughs> like, and that's just how it works. So, I mean, the way that I always recommend is like just start with what you got, you know, like um, if, if you need to do a garage sale, do a garage sale, to start the business, you know, and that's okay. That's a great story later on, you know, like, yeah, I sold everything in my garage to start my business. I sold my, I sold my mom's cameras to start my business. <laughs> you know? I partnered with a guy who cleaned out houses, you know, foreclosed homes. I sold his stuff on eBay for him and, and built my business a little bit. Right. Like I found ways because I, you know, I didn't even have a credit card or anything at that time. So I was just like, 
just figuring out ways to to make money, you know. Um, so moving on here, uh, let's see. What um, what advice would you give to someone who's just starting out? You know, wants to take this thing from a side hustle, you know, where they're making an extra 20, 30 K a year to full fledged, like you're, you got a six figure flipping business now. Yeah. In terms of like monthly, uh, uh profit. Yeah. And if you, as long as you maintain that, you'll hit six figures easily. So what would you tell somebody who is just kind of starting out and they want to, want to take this seriously? Um, I would say, I feel you, you need to, I think your why, your why is very important. Um, I think if, if your why is very weak, if it's just about, you need to have a why and, and your why ever. I, I think Hormozzi always says, keep saying Hormozzi, I'm going to keep. Okay, <laughs> we both listen to him. A yeah. lot of people, Yeah, like, I talk about him all the time. I get a lot of my stuff from him and I yeah. quote him all the time. He talks about how like very successful people, they've, they've got insecurities and things they're dealing with. Um, but I think when you're just starting out, you kind of need to promise yourself to just give yourself a year and just say, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to stop. I'm like, I'm going to do this for at least a year. And, and, and just, just, just promise you, depends on how serious you take your promises, but just, just promise yourself not to quit, not to stop going. Just, it goes back to consistency and, and always, you need to have a strong why, like, why do you want to do this? And it, of course it's about money, but it also needs to be beyond money. I don't have kids right now. I feel like from watching your videos, I could tell that, you care a lot about being a good father. I feel like I just tell, I don't know. I, I feel like that's something that's very important to you. I don't, I don't have kids right now, but that's, that's one of my main drivers is like, okay, like the type of father that I want to be or the type of life I want to give my future family, like your why needs to be, it needs to be strong. And when you have a strong why, it, 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 it definitely would push you to keep that commitment to yourself. Of like, I'm gonna give myself, I'll give myself a year and I'm not gonna stop. And no matter what, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna fall, but I'm gonna get up, and I'm gonna keep going. But um, just commit one year. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, the other day I was actually on a walk, and um, you know, I had a um, had an issue in the business, right? Just issue on the coaching side of it. Anyway, wasn't a big issue, but it was uh, I think it was last Friday actually. And usually by Friday, I'm pretty burnt out like with everything in the, in the business and everything, you know, and like, you know, that thought of quitting came into my brain a little bit. And then I, and then I thought about it again and I was like, I haven't even put a thousand days into this thing yet. Mm. You know, like, like we've been doing recelerator that stuff for about two years. It's only about 600 and something days. I'm like, I haven't even put a thousand days in yet. Mm. I'm also a big Andy Frisella listener too. And he, you know, one thing he says all the time is you, your past 1000 days is the reason you are who you are right now. Mm. And I'm just like, it, that's powerful, you know? And so like, yeah, I agree with the one year thing. Right. And if you, even six months, really like Aaron Goldstein, one of our coaches talks about it all the time. And he's just like, look, to do well, like any type, any type of success, you need to put in at least four to six months of consistent effort to actually see, you know, four to five grand in profit per month. Now you can accelerate it because there's something that I like to call, and I kind of stole this off of Ramosi a little bit, but like there's, there's an effort uh, aspect, like there's an effort currency, right? Mm -hmm. There's an effort currency and there's a time currency. Um, and both of them have to do with knowledge, right? So, you can get knowledge, you can buy knowledge, right? Quickly. You can also buy knowledge and then implement the knowledge at an accelerated rate with more effort. So a good example of this is one of our students, Devon, who he went from zero, or he had a little bit of experience, but he went from zero to 43,000 in profit in 90 days. How did he do that? Well, we recommended 600 reach outs in his first month. He did 3,600. He accelerated his learning by six times, right? So you can accelerate your learning very quickly um, just based on effort. And he did it in a high, like, 
quote unquote comp competitive area as well, like Baltimore area, Maryland, you know, like Yeah, the- I bet I bet he probably had like he probably had he probably had a very strong why. Like when you're oh, that yeah. when you're that driven, is it has gotta be there's something just there's something that's just really driving you. Yeah. Hundred percent he wanted to leave his job. That was his that was his why. That was like, why. He wanted it so bad that he would miss work to flip phones. Wow. Like that that's how strong it was. And it kind of goes back to what you said. It's it's your why, but there's also a time aspect and effort aspect included, right? If you if you spend the time and the effort at the same level, um, you you can accelerate your learning process so quickly through the act of just doing, right? Mm-hmm. And where Mosey talks about this all the time, he's like, hundred a day, yeah, of one thing. If you do a hundred a day, you will accelerate your learning process faster than everybody else. You know, he also talks about finding the top guy in yeah. wherever you work or whatever, and figure out what they're doing, and then just do two times what they're doing. Double it, yeah. You'll learn, you know, and it's so true. Like a lot of people don't realize it because it takes a lot of effort, a lot of effort to do it. <clears throat> and, um, you know, that's, that's why we're pumping out these podcasts, you know, faster than ever now. It's like, we've noticed that it works, you know, so we're putting more effort to make it go faster, you know? Um, but I love that dude. So here's a good question. Yeah. Looking back, you know, to when you first started, is there anything that you would have done differently when you were first started? Is there anything I would have done differently when I first started? I would have started running ads sooner. I didn't start running ads for like I want to say like three months in. <laughs> <laughs> so you were just doing reach outs, huh? I was reach outs, yeah, for like three months, and then, and then I worked with an agency, and um, uh, and then I basically learned from them. I know hormone. Sorry, I'm gonna yep, say it again. No, I, yeah, hundred percent. Uh, and a, there's this book, got it on me. Hey, I'm not promoting, but it's right here. It's called hundred million dollar leads. And uh, oh, it's right there. Right here. I got bookmarks in mine. In the okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing. I love this. I got little bookmarks in certain places, you know. Uh-huh. I, I'm re I reread it pretty often. And that's important. Me too. As you uh, as you learn stuff, you you learn you reread. And then you learn something completely different that you didn't get the first time. I love that. And go ahead. the agency and the chapter where he talks about agency, you know, he says like, okay, yeah, you want, it's, you want to, it's nice to work with an agency, but you need to let them know like your, your goal is to learn, you know, your goal is to learn. And then, so, so whenever I started working with the agency, I didn't tell them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of like started like, like you know, picking apart what they were doing, and that's kind of how I found out about like different softwares. And anyway, and I kind of just learned from working with an agency. And after a few weeks, I was like, I could do this myself now. So, yeah. So basically, yeah, I started running ads three months in. So if I if I could go back in time, I definitely would have started sooner. Start running ads sooner. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually one thing we built into Recelerator, and we tell people fr- up front, it's like we don't want to run your ads forever. We're gonna help you run them for six months. But then it's on you because we're gonna we're gonna teach you how to do it. That way you don't need us moving forward to do that. Because um, with, you know, whenever I ran an agency, um, one thing I didn't like was when you got a good amount of clients, is you couldn't deliver as well anymore. Mm. Like, no matter what you, you know, most people say, like you can hire and you can whatever. <clears throat> like they want you, like the main guy that knows how to do this stuff. They want that, you know. And when they start getting a good amount of clients, they can't deliver as well as they used to. So that's why we gave, you know, the six month thing with Recelerator. Like we're gonna help you with for six months. And that was from Hormozy who basically, I was like, let's just build that into our program. Like just teach them how to do it, you know? That's and, nice. Uh, so that's what we did and people love that. So um, it's pretty cool. Um, so starting ads, you would have done that earlier. And you're just doing Facebook ads? Are you doing Google yet? It's so interesting because I watched it's so because I'm part of your group, right? And uh, what's that guy's name? Aaron. Like, oh. <laughs> so I was talking about Aaron? Google leads, Google, yeah, him. Yeah. And it's like, oh, Google leads, Google leads are hot, like Google leads. So I think about a month ago, for the first like nine months, well, technically next month it would be a year since I've been in the business because I've only been in the business, I want to say this month makes it 11 months, but um, 
I want to say about 30 days ago, I started looking into Google Ads. And that's crazy because I actually went on YouTube. I watched your video on Google Ads too. Yeah. <laughs> also, because um, I, I watched your video, cause obviously, because yours is industry specific. I also like watched some other videos from other people on Google, on YouTube, and I, I designed my website. I'm constantly wanting to learn and I'm obsessed with like skill acquisition. I'm yeah. not I'm not really a fan of other people doing stuff for me because I feel like I'm young enough to where it's like I have time time to learn. Sorry. No, you're good. Oh. Lost him. Basically what he's talking about, guys, is just acquiring more and more skills um and getting better and better. And that that's something that I actually call skill stacking. Um, when you start stacking multiple skills on top of each other and, uh, you know, you just win faster because you know more. And it's a, it's a really, really, really good way to, um, you know, grow your grow everything very quickly because, you know, more than most people. By the way, I want to throw in this quote while, while he's waiting to hop back on. Um, so uh, there is a quote that goes around where people will talk a lot about um hey what's up dude yeah i'm sorry man i think a call came in and it just kind of messed it up yeah you're fine no i was just uh you know i was talking about the skill stacking thing a little bit there and yeah. uh, you know there's a quote that floats around um and it's um uh the what was it the master of uh what the heck is that the master of i'll have to find it but Continue what you were saying, and then I'll find it. Uh, oh, uh, what are you? Uh, what I was just saying was just like uh, skill like because Harmozi always says like you can you can lose everything, get divorced, freaking lose your job, like yeah, your spouse takes half of your property and everything, <laughs> but you still have your skill sets, and you yeah. can always fall back on them. They're never gonna fail you. So as long till you, I mean, when you die, you're gone. But like as long as you're alive. You're always gonna have your skill set sets to fall back on. So for me, it's so crazy because whenever whenever I first got started in this business, I told myself like the skill that I'm obsessed with is marketing. Yeah. Because Homo says, you know, you got product, marketing, sales. Well, technically, he was like, product is the most important. And then he says marketing, sales. Well, he says you can you can kind of combine marketing and sales and call it acquisition. Mm -hmm. But basically, especially coming from the life insurance industry, I don't there's this I actually when I was 19, I bought a, a course for like $3,000. It was a sales course by Jeremy Miners. Because I, I had been listening to Homo's talking about you investing yourself, investing yourself. So I bought the course and I paid, I think it was like $4,000. And honestly, like that was a bad experience for me because I, I, especially at, at, when you're young, you don't have a lot of money. You put that much money into a course. And then unfortunately, I, I just I just didn't gain what I thought I would gain from the course because when you're when you're in sales, you need to actually you need repetition. You need to practice the sales script. And unfortunately, I wasn't getting enough leads, so I wasn't I wasn't getting enough opportunities to actually practice the sales skills that I was learning. So I was like, man, marketing is so important because without the leads, your sales your sales ability doesn't really matter at that point. I don't know. Yeah. It, depends, it depends on the industry, I guess. But in the insurance industry, even though I have nobody to talk to, it doesn't matter. So. I was like, man, marketing is so important. So now I'm I'm obsessed with marketing. Like, literally, like it's 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 my it's my. I'm not trying to start a marketing agency, yeah, yeah. but it's it's my focus. Like I'm just, Love yeah. That. yeah. Now, so it's funny that you say this because I've been, you know, I went through Hormozzi's first book, second book, multiple times. And um, as far as product goes, the best product in the in the phone flipping space that I, you know, that I know of anyway, and I've played with a bunch of them is uh we'll pay you cash for your phone like that is the best product that you can offer you know <laughs> like I, so i get a lot of repair guys that come to me pretty often they're like um how can buybacks help me you know like i you know i run a repair business and this that and everything else and i'm like well it's a lot easier to sell somebody on giving them cash than it is to take it from them mm -hmm. right? like which would you prefer? Would you rather me give you cash or take it from you? And they're like, well, give it, obviously. You see what I mean? Like, that's the best product that you can offer, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the sales and everything, like the sales and the negotiation and, and stuff, like that that's a big part of it is the marketing and sales and negotiation. Um, but the best offer you can make in this this industry is we'll pay cash for your devices. 
yeah. like it's hard to beat that. Um, I do want to go back to the skill stacking here real quick. Um, so a lot of a lot of people say a jack of all trades is a master of none, right? Yeah. I actually found the full quote: a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. So the person who has multiple skills is most of the time much better than the person who just has one. Mm. Very powerful to know that like that, the full, like I, I was only seeing half the quote for a long time. Mm. Wow. I didn't. Full yeah. I mean, if you look at Hormozy, he's, he's a jack of all trades and a master of all of them. Mm. Really think about it. And that just kind of goes to show you, you have the time to get good at almost everything in yeah. one specific industry, let's say. Like, I would say stick with one industry and just get really good at all of the skills in that industry, whether it's the marketing, the negotiation, the sales, the eBay, the whatever. Like, if you can get good at all of those pieces, I mean, you can become the go-to guy in the business, right? So I love that. And I love, you know, you were talking about the skill stacking and it's it's a real thing. Like, yeah. if you get really good, then you become just really good. Um. Uh, so we'll wrap up here in a few minutes, but, um, one thing I do want to ask is what's your best piece of advice for managing your finances and reinvesting in the business? Oh, I like this one. Cause that's my, come from, that's my yeah, finance. Yeah, I know. That's why I asked it. <laughs> for managing your finance. So what's, what's my best tip for managing your finances and reinvesting in your business? Yeah. So it's so crazy. Cause, uh, I, so for me personally, because, I just graduated from college, like being a college student, like you'd have roommates and stuff. So being in college, you're kind of forced. I'm not, well, if you come from a rich home, I get maybe not, but you're kind of forced to like live cheap kind of. So like when I started making money, it didn't matter. It really didn't matter how much money I was making. Like I made sure to always live below. It's kind of comes from Dave Ramsey, but like some people don't like the term live below your means, but I'm, I, I'm a big fan of that. Like I don't, and I feel like there's there has to be sort of a balance. Cause I was talking to um to another person in the phone flipping industry. He's also really big. I was talking to him yesterday. And he was talking about how like you kind of need to reward yourself too. But I feel like there's there are different phases in life. There there's gonna be a phase of like Brian, go go go, and there's a phase yeah. of like you know. So, but I would say like especially when you're just starting out and you're trying to really build your business, um, it's very important not to just blow your money like. You really need to. For me, I'm I'm a numbers guy. I'm really I love numbers. I'm really good at math, so I feel like it helps as a businessman. But like I think in terms of percentages, so for me, whenever I grad before I graduated college, my plan was to immediately after graduation, my plan was to get to at least ten thousand dollars net profit, because, uh, for me, I, my rule was like a twenty percent rule, which was live on twenty, which it sounds really low. Live on twenty percent of what you make, which is like whoa, because typically it's eighty twenty. You should typically it's like oh yeah, like save save twenty and live on eighty. But mine was extreme because yeah. like you know what, I'm gonna live on twenty, and and try to and try to invest. Well, this is not the time. Well, try to invest and reinvest and save eighty. Obviously, taxes you got to put taxes into consideration. I understand that, but um, I was like, if I'm making only five thousand dollars a month, I can't live on a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, <laughs> I need to make enough money to be able to live on twenty, but at at your current stage, twenty the number might not be twenty percent. It might be fifty percent. Maybe you're making five thousand needs to live on twenty five hundred. But um, I just I just always knew that the only way you're gonna be able to keep reinvesting is if you're not blowing all of your money. You kind of you need to have a from a budget and perspective. It's like okay, these are all of my expenses. I obviously I've got rent for my business. I paid my employees this much. I've got this much in rent. I pay this much for certain softwares. Okay, this is my this is like my fixed expenses. Like okay. Yeah, fixed. And then I've got my ad, how much I'm, uh, how much uh, my ad spend and everything. So it's kind of like, okay, obviously I, I know all of my expenses. Obviously I know how much is coming in the, the obviously revenue, the difference is profit and just say, okay, I need to keep putting money back in the business. Therefore I cannot live on all of my profit. You know, I, I can only live on a certain percentage. Of course, you also need to send money aside for taxes. Well, if you're actually, if you actually have an LLC and all that good stuff, but um, I would say like, the biggest thing with finances is like definitely like have your spreadsheet, keep track of it, <laughs> keep track of, <laughs> keep track of like how much money's coming in and how much the sales you're making. Because apparently some people actually don't keep track of that. But um, yeah, have, <laughs> it's have, true. And know what's coming in and know know you know what's going out and 
try to try not to blow everything. Like if you're going to live on 80%, 90%, at least you're saving something. I'm just a bit extreme because I've got really big goals, but um, yeah, just live on less than you make. <laughs> well, I mean, if you feed the business, it feeds you, right? Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. how it works, right? So the more you feed into the business, the more it'll feed you. I wonder how do you personally got me? I'm I'm curious about you. Like, do you live on a certain percentage, or are you just like I mean, well, how do you go about it personally? So, I mean, it's a little different in my case. Like, I have like six income streams, right? The way that I like to do it is like, um, so with this stream over here, this stream pays for these bills, this stream pays for these bills, and this one pays for this, right? Uh, like for example, with resale deck, is resale deck's a good one. It pays for itself for the most part. Like all of the, I have a separate account for that one. Um, and basically everything that that inflows with that, it just kind of just keeps building, but it also keeps paying its own expenses. So it's like building by itself, you know. Um, the reselling side of things, we're actually transitioning more to a direct buyer type type of thing. Uh, oh. with, Aaron, with Aaron Goldstein, uh, Mercury Electronics for everybody out there. Um, so that'll, that'll be something different that, that, that I'm going to be switching bank accounts up with, but if I had to say, and I got to get better at it, but we are very good at tracking everything. That's one thing for that. As far as allocating it, I over allocate back into the business more than anything else because I want to grow. Right. And that's my goal. I would say it's probably like, I probably take home about 40, like I live off about 40 to 50%. Okay. Um, and I reinvest about 50 back in easily maybe even 60 yeah uh, when you not to cut you up but when you say 40 percent, 40 to 50 is that just like personal expenses or is that including like maybe like investments not business investments outside of the business like stocks or like currently i don't invest in any of that i invest in myself in the business uh, like, okay i like i'm I, I will invest in that stuff uh once i'm 30 like, oh how oh. i'm investing i'm 29 right now uh, uh -huh. I'm so for the past five years, I've I've constantly just reinvested everything into the business, and that, to my wife's dismay, like <laughs> you know, like that's put off a lot of vacations, a yeah. lot of them, right? We haven't had a vacation in two years, wow. Uh, and uh, that's just because I just reinvest everything into either knowledge, masterminds, or just the business itself, right? Mm -hmm. um, I buy a lot of courses, I invest in a lot of masterminds. Uh, you know, those masterminds are 24K a pop, you know? Wow. So, yeah. uh, but the reason for that is like, I'm learning in my 20s and I will 100% earn in my 30s because we already got a very solid cash flow. Yeah. Um, just they, And that that's all from just investing in knowledge and investing in my skill sets. Wow. Uh, you know, Hormozy talks about that a lot. He's like, the best thing you can do is invest in your skill sets and it'll you'll earn later on, right? Um so that I mean, that's one thing I, I would also point out for everybody listening to is like invest in yourself and your business early on, because that's what's going to feed you. And that's what's going to that's what, what's going to help you invest into everything else later. Um, because, I mean, w once again, it goes back to like you can lose all of your investment money if, you know, something crashes or, you know, a black swan event happens in the United States. Right. Like the likelihood of it happening now is it's up in the air actually, you know, um, times are weird. Right. So, um, but it goes back to what you talked about earlier. Like whenever you invest in skill sets, nobody can take them. Yeah. Like you can start at zero. Like I can start at zero and have a, you know, a 10 K a month phone flipping business in, you know, one to two months, three months, maybe. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause it's not hard. I already, I already know what to do. I've done it before. We actually had a uh, Eric, on Eric um, Rizzolato a few weeks ago, and he talked about that, right? Like, I'm the guy that helped him start Facebook ads in the very beginning with him, right? So, and he talked about how he's he's gone from, you know, 30K a month back to zero multiple times, and he mm -hmm. had to restart the business over and over again because, you know, just rough decisions made with partners and things like that, and, but the fact remains, he already had the skill set. Yeah. Just start again. You yeah. know, and yeah. uh, I see that happen a lot too. Like people that'll leave the business, but they'll still have the skill set, and then they'll just come back and crush it again for a couple of months. Leave again, it, and for them, it's more of a consistency issue, 
right? Mm -hmm. Like, imagine if you just stuck with this thing for, you know, 10 years. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. imagine what that could be, right? Yeah. So, right. but yeah, as far as allocating my stuff, we live off about 40%. I reinvest everything else back into ads, marketing, the business, and, and, and education. Heavy, heavy focus on education. Number one, because it's a massive tax write-off. <laughs> yeah. <man. laughs> For everybody listening, if you want to offset your taxes, invest in your skill sets and buy buy courses and mentorships and masterminds because you can write that stuff off very easily and the government won't even ask you about it. So are they mostly like business masterminds? Yeah, yeah. very high-level marketing masterminds. Marketing. Yeah, like uh, the one we're actually going here next week to the Scale Mastermind in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Um so that that's one I've been attending for years. Who's uh, who's uh, clients and community? It's a it's a big coaching company, and uh, yeah. So uh, have, I, have you thought of because uh, I actually spoke to I, I was actually on the call with um, somebody from Alex's team yesterday, um, Acquisition dot com, Hermosi, and because I was wanting to attend the workshop, the one that Layla does. Have you been to any of the workshops yet? Not yet. Uh, plan on going next year. Um, Me too. I'll qualify pretty easily, but um, I just haven't had the time to, to do it with everything I've been going on. So uh, yeah. we'll, I'll be going from, I'm aiming for January or February. That's when I'll apply. Okay. And I'll be there next year. But in your case, because obviously this is about me, not you, but maybe after this, Matt, because I've got some questions for you. So let's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's okay. I guess I'll, I'll ask those questions later. Yeah, yeah. We'll wrap this up and then we'll, we'll do that. Um, but, uh, dude, um, what would you tell if you, like, and I want to wrap back around to this real quick. Um, for the people that, that are young, that are just starting out, or even somebody that's, you know, older than you, what, what would you say um, to those people that, that think that they can't grow this business for whatever reason? Maybe, they're, maybe they think their area is too small. Maybe they think they don't have enough capital. Maybe they think, you know, all of those kind of excuses that everybody tells themselves. What would you say to those people that are just starting out in this business and, and trying to grow it to the point where they go full time? Yeah, the I mean, I only have one. I don't have a lot. The the main thing I have to say about that is like, and I say this to people to some of the people in my life. Like one thing I've noticed is that focusing on most times focusing on on the things that are not working in your favor. Most times, like most times, it it just it it doesn't. Most times, it doesn't do you any good. <laughs> most most times, it's just like, yeah, my area is small. Okay, and then what? Because yeah. it's just like, unfortunately, having to even admit, admit, admit into the fact that like focusing on my disadvantage, just like oh, like I'm too young and or I'm I don't have enough money. Or unfortunately, it just it it just never works in your favor. It never it doesn't do you any good. So I'd rather put my energy towards being more optimistic and, 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 you know, be more optimistic. And, and what, what is it that I can, what, what's something positive that, that I can think about that could help me. So if, if you believe your area is too small or I'll say, I mean, obviously that, that could be a limit, a, a limiting belief and that, that could be a problem in your business. So I think it's important to just try your best to just ignore that <laughs> as yeah. it's said than done. <laughs> but uh, I think I've always just been a positive person or like a more optimistic person, but being in business, I think you, you kind of need to be a bit more optimistic. And if there, especially if there are other people, especially if there are other people in your area who are killing it, then that, that shouldn't be an excuse. Cause what, what, what makes them different? You know, you kind of have to have that mindset or that mentality, but um, just, just why can't you be the first, you know, it's like if, if, yeah. if, and also in terms of like, if you feel like you don't have enough money, or something. I mean, if you if you need to pick up like I don't know, like he said, you can start with whatever. But if you if you, cause I'm not gonna lie, I started with like I think four thousand dollars when I got when I started. And this business, I put four thousand from my savings into my business bank account. And I started with that. But honestly, I, you don't even need that to start with. But it's like you can start with freaking five hundred dollars or whatever you have. But almost he always says, use whatever you have, <laughs> whatever yeah. you have, yeah. whatever you have. So, um, just start. Just start, just start. So whatever it is that you feel like might be holding you back or your area is too small. If you feel like your area is too small, I would definitely recommend like trying to network with other 
phone flippers in the area or yeah. any fucking because that's my area is not too small, but I've, I've I know somebody personally in my city who does like seven figures phone flipping. He's got like and he was the one. And here's the thing: humility is very important. Like I'm like I'm like literally I was like yo bro, he's way richer than me like ten times. Yeah. I was like bro, I love to have lunch with you. I'll pay for it. It's like no, he's like. When we got there, I paid for the food because he's like, you, you're offering to pay. Most times when I go out with people, they always expect me to pay. I'm like, nah, nah. I want to learn from you. I'll pay. Like, yeah. And I was I want to learn. Like, I started asking him questions. And he was the one who kind of put the idea in my mind to actually get a physical location. I reached out to him. Oh, actually, yeah. I reached out to him and I was like, Let, I want to meet, meet up with you and I want to learn, you know. And uh, you can never go wrong with just reaching out to people, it's, even locally and learning from them. So if you feel like something's holding you back, like, if there are other people in your area that you can find on marketplace or look up freaking phone flip phone stores around you or something, but just network with people and don't let don't let those things limit you. Just just try to be a bit more on the optimistic side. It's easier said than done, but um, it's better to be optimistic than to be pessimistic. So love that. I think that's a good place to end this. Yeah, appreciate it, dude. I appreciate you coming on. We'll have to do this again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Dude. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments of this episode of the smart flip. Also, um, you know, if you want to be on an episode of the smart flip, feel free to reach out to me. We'd love to have you on. Uh, we can promote your business as long as, you know, you're a legit guy or girl. And, uh, yeah, guys, um, see you guys later. You guys have a great day and let me know what you think of the podcast.